Howdy guys, IndiePixel here, and in this video I wanted to walk through how to procedurally generate these grass cards for Unreal's uh, grass system. Uh, because, you know, it's quite laborious making these things, and um, when you're trying to make really efficient grass cards, you constantly have to go back and forth, you know, tweaking the grass and changing it, and that's a lot of work um, when you're doing it uh, manually. And so I wanted to show a way that I'm... I've come up with the, to do it procedurally, and uh, basically we're going to build this scene. We're also going to be use, utilizing um, Houdini Engine uh, V2, uh, just for the terrain uh, for this. It's really basic stuff, but we're going to walk through that. Uh, we're also going to walk through um, how to set up every step so that we get these efficient grass cards. Um, and we're also going to develop the, um, the texture for this guy too. So um, we're also going to do the spherical normals, right? So it lights nicely inside of the engine. Works both for Unity and Unreal. And, but we're also going to make the uh, texture as well. Um, we're going to do it all here in Houdini. No other software is used. So um, hopefully you guys are excited to make a grass field with some efficient grass carts. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started by uh, creating our grass blade first. So I'm going to create a geometry node here and we're going to dive inside and I'm going to drop down a line here really quick. And I'm actually just going to keep it um, at a height of or a length of one for now. I'm most likely just going to keep all this stuff pretty normalized because uh, basically this is all based off of a, a meter. So it's currently three feet, which is pretty tall grass. Um, and so we'll just keep it between the, the, that particular range. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to resample this. And the reason why I'm, I'm going to use a resample node here is because when I resample this guy, so you can see we have a bunch of new points over here, um, I can take advantage of this curve U attribute that it produces. So it's a value of uh, 0 to 1 right there. If you ever wanted to visualize that, you can always uh, select the node that you want to visualize, hit X on the keyboard. Uh, you can also create the, the node itself if you just want to use the tab menu but X is the, the shortcut for that. Uh, and you can come into the Visualizers tab here and just look up the uh, curve U attribute and set it to a marker instead and uh, turn off the update visualizers. And now you have a zero to one value. So you can just see your data. <laughs> All right, so then I wanna go and sweep this guy. And for this, we are going to utilize uh, the ribbon. We don't need a, our own custom curve or anything like that or profile. Uh, inside of the construction here, I'm actually going to set this to the z-axis so it's constrained to the z-axis there because it's going to be facing the camera when we actually turn this into a texture. Um, I don't really need any columns. You're more than welcome to put in as much resolution as you want here. And I'm just going to reduce the width um, a little bit, and then we're going to go and also apply some scale along curve here. So I'm going to add another little knot over here and uh, just kind of shape this into the shape of a grass blade, really. Uh, I'm going to go for obviously the more stylized look here. I'm also going to select all these knots here by holding down control uh, on the keyboard. And I'm going to switch this over to B spline so we get something a little bit more smooth there. We can also kind of sculpt this a little bit better. Maybe make this just a little bit wider down here. A little bit stronger. You can actually overpower these guys by holding down the middle mouse button on the mouse over here. And you can actually just increase that value. It's a little bit too much for my taste there. Yeah, so that'll work pretty good. All right, so now what I want to do is um, add some color to this. So I'm just going to do a color node. And I'm going to actually set this to a ramp from attribute. And the attribute we're going to use is that curve view value again. So it's really important to always, well, not always produce the attribute, but um, just know that that is there. So you can utilize it for lots of different things. And then finally, uh, what I want to do here is um, add on some different colors, basically. And so uh, for these colors here, so this gradient right here um, is going to be the gradient that I use to uh, uh, set the base color. So I'm actually going to set this to a red and this to a black. So that'll be my first gradient. Uh, I'm going to create another one of these by holding down Alt, clicking, and dragging to create a duplicate of that. And then basically I want this to be the tip color, so I'm going to make that blue. I'm just going to make this black. Now you can obviously keep all those in one particular node. I'm just splitting it out so I, I can't control those separately. All right, so we'll call this um, the tip color. 
and this is our base base uh, ramp like so so we can use this base ramp to um, clamp off like the simple wind inside of unreal and also you know tint it a little bit uh, you can do a lot with that particular ramp and then the blue color basically is going to be uh, used for the um, tip of the the uh, curve so let's do something like that now what I want to do is I want to um, put these two both together together here so we'll just do this with a wrangle node like so uh, we'll call this combined colors and I just need to type vector other color is equal to point and we're going to get that from the second input which is the first index right there so remember it goes zero one two three all right and the attribute that we want is the cd which is the color attribute and i just want to get it from that same number so that pt num and then all we need to do is just um, add those two together so at cd uh, plus equals um, other color there we go so now we got them all blended together perfectly yeah let's maybe bring this down just a little bit something like that that looks pretty good. All right, so then we're also going to need a bend node so we get this guy set up for when we actually place it on the line here. So let's um, get this blend node or bend node here and let's set a few things up. So uh, I actually want to change these capture settings. If you select the bend node itself and then come over to the scene view and hit enter on the keyboard, you can see the, the gizmo um, and the, basically that's where it's going to be bending it from. And so I need to change the capture direction of one and Y, and I'm actually just going to leave the capture length at 1, because remember our grass blade is all normalized here. So that allows us to basically tilt it this way. Uh, and so this is going to be our Z bend, and then let's make another one, and we will put it onto the X axis, so we'll call this the X bend. And we really just need to change um, this guy, so the up vector, um, I believe, is on the Z axis now. Yeah, there we go. So now we have control over the bend in, in X. Cool. All right, so with that, we now have set up our grass blade with everything we need to do. So I'm going to call this out grass blade. And what we need to focus on now is creating the placement of all these grass blades. All right, let's do that in the next step. Okay, so now what I want to do is create a, a line that I can basically scatter uh, these grass blades across. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go and create a line and I'm going to point this guy on the X axis like so. And from there, uh, I'm going to resample this. So let's just resample this. Basically this line is going to be what controls the placement of all the grass on my uh, grass card here. All right. And so we're going to have to set up a few attributes for this. And to do that, we are going to need that curve view uh, value again. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what you use for this um, particular value because we're going to be scattering points onto this. So uh, really, this is just to get you this curve view value. All right, so uh, let's do a point jitter now. So point jitter, like so. And all I want to do with this guy is actually just do it on the Z axis here. Let's reduce that a bit. So I, I want to get some kind of depth range in there by using that. And then finally, uh, let's do a match size. So this is all centered up um, on the world axis, like so. Beautiful. OK. And then we need to go and scatter some points. So let's scatter some points here. All right. Um, let's, uh, I'm not sure why the grass blade is actually still showing up. I have noticed that. In Houdini 18, we get some weird scene view um, bugs. So if that ever happens, yeah, see that one away. Uh, you just go and recreate that scene view, and uh, it'll update the the window. I'm not really sure if it's my machine or if it's a Houdini thing, uh, but that is the fix for that. All right, so now we're scattering some points, and I don't honestly want that many grass blades there, something like that. I do want to control the density though. So let's put in an attribute remap. We can remap the um, curve view value using this guy. So um, I'm just going to call this density. So I'm going to take the curve view attribute and remap it into this density value, which the scatter node is actually looking for. So this density attribute right here. All right. And so uh, what we can do now is I, so I want to say I want more density in the middle here and then less density on the outsides here. 
So it gives you an extra amount of control. Yeah. So if we were to actually template our line, uh, well, actually we need to template this guy. There we go. So we're getting less density on the outsides and more in the middle. And you can obviously go and change the min and max values too if you want to stretch it back out just a little bit. Like so. Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, so with that done, uh, let's go and do another point jitter here. I found it just really helps kind of break things up if we just do a point jitter uh, just in the uh, x-axis here. And I'm going to use that later, so let's do a point jitter. There we go. So point jitter. All right. Uh, and then I just want this on the x-axis this time. So it just helps me kind of spread it out even more. You don't really need that much. Something like that. Very cool. All right. So with that, we can now go and uh, copy to points. So let's drop down a copy to points. And I want to copy my grass blades here. And we want to copy to my points that I created with the line. And there we go. So now we have our grass cards copied to that line. So one thing uh, we need to do here is actually roll through each point because uh, I'm going to set up a few attributes here. Let me actually select all these guys, hold down A on the keyboard and then left click and drag to organize these guys like so. I want to create some uh, attributes that control things like the bending. Uh, I also want to control my scale and I also want to control uh, the length of our grass blades as well. All right, so to do that, we use this for each node here. So I can roll through each point and uh, get the attribute from each one of those points. All right, so we'll see how this all works here in just a second. Cool, so let's start with uh, the Z-Bend here. That'll be the most obvious one. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna be able to bend these based off of you know where it lies on that line, right? So if it's on this side, it should bend this way. If it's on this side, it should bend this way. All right, and so uh, all we need to do is just uh, drop down another attribute remap uh, value here. And I'm going to call this my bend remap. And I want to take that uh, curve view value again. And we are going to put it into an attribute called bend. So if you have your geometry spreadsheet open over here, you can see now we have this bend attribute. Now, if you don't, you can always come up here, hit that little plus button, and go to inspectors, geometry spreadsheet. Cool. So now we have this bend value. And currently it's just going from zero to one. And what I want to do is I want to have it go from zero to one to zero. Well, actually, we actually want to go from negative one to one. My bad. So I want to go from negative one uh, to zero, no bend, to one, to full bend, go in the other direction. All right, and uh, I'm also going to select these guys and set the interpolation. So I'm, this time I'm just right clicking. So set interpolation, be spline. Cool, so now I want to use that um, attribute that we created, so that bend attribute, I want to use it over here in my Z bend. And so uh, just to make this even more obvious, let's drop down a null node here right below my for each begin, and we'll call this um, point data. So we're going to get the data from this single point, because remember, we're looping through each one of these points here. Uh, and you can verify that by going to your for each end node here and going to single pass. So now you can see I'm just going through each point. This way I have access to each point's data or the attributes. All right, so I'm gonna turn that single pass off. Cool. So we're gonna get data from this particular node. And so I'm gonna come into this uh, Z bend node or the bend node here for the Z direction. And this is where we're controlling that. Let me actually turn this guy on as the display. So I wanna control this particular value on a per point basis. So I don't want all these guys moving in the same direction. So uh, in order to uh, do this, we need to get a value um, and so that value is going to be point, all right? So you can see if you open up a parenthesis here, uh, you can get uh, the data off of a point using the string float string float argument pattern here. So the first string is the name of the node. So we do dot dot forward slash and we say uh, point data. Uh, the second argument is our point number. That's going to be zero because remember, we only have a single point here. So that point number is zero. It'll always be zero for every point. Uh, and then the attribute we want is bend, like so. And we just want the first value. There we go. So now we are getting a bend value. And it's super, super subtle because currently, if I were to left click on this, it's just going from negative one uh, to one right now. So I need to fit this. So I'm going to say fit. 
this point value between or from uh, negative 1 to 1, we want to do something like, let's say, negative 30 to 30, like so. Oh, and we also need to negate that. There we go. And it looks like I'm getting some, a weird result there. Let's go back to our remapping. And Oh, this actually needs to be 0 to 1. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So now you're getting that bending value. Um, let's go back to our Benzie. And actually, we don't, I mean, you can leave it on the fit. Uh, you don't really need to because I already have a value that goes from negative 1 to 1. So if I just multiply this by something like, um, oh, I don't know, like 90 degrees. There you go. So now you got something really cool there to control your, your bending from one side to the other. Very nice. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to scale this guy as well. So let's do another attribute uh, remap. We're just going to keep using that curve U value. So I'm just going to call this my scale remap like so. And we are again going to take that curve U value. I'm going to call this the P scale. All right, so we'll do a P little P scale there. And um, what I want to do is just make it pretty tall in the middle there. And we can adjust all this stuff later on. I will put this from uh, 0 to 1 to 0, and then we can control our min and max from here. Yeah, so you do something like that. Yeah, it's starting to look cool. All right, and then finally, um, I also want to control the length of each uh, of those particular grass cards. So we also have another control up here that controls the overall length of those guys, right? And so let's go to um, attribute remap. Or let's drop down our attribute remap node. I'm going to call this my uh, length remap. There we go. And I want to do um, curve view. We'll call this length, like so. And again, we're just going to do that 0 to 1 to 0 curve, like so. And uh, now what we need to do is we need to pump it into here. All right, so we're currently going to utilize this length remap to control the, the values, right? So all I need need to do is just come in here and do a point expression. So I'll do point and I want to get the data from our point data node. And we'll get the length attribute and put in zero for the first uh, index there. And I'm doing the VEX version here. There we go. Cool. So now we're controlling the, the length as well. So we can come back to our length remap node and I can increase the minimum maybe decrease the maximum there, even though that looked pretty cool before. And there you go. So now we have a really easy way to control uh, how our grass cards look. Pretty cool stuff. And we can always come back uh, to these guys. So let's go back to this. This is the Z value, or the Z offset here. So let me actually get a better view there. So that's the Z value. Pretty cool. So let's call this our uh, Z offset. And we'll call this one our x offset. This is the x. So again, we should just keep this at 1. That way we can control um, everything from here. Oh, let's get rid of this guy. Actually, no, I want 1 there and 0 for z. There we go. Just want to focus on one axis. Yeah, I think I'm liking that. All right, so next thing we need to do now is get this prepped and ready for um, our grass card because we need to render it out basically to a texture. Um, I also want to get the Unreal project uh, set up and um, before I actually, usually before I go and render these things out to textures, I'll actually test the real mesh itself to see how it's looking. So let's move on to the next step and get all those things going. All right, so now we got all that stuff all hooked up. Uh, one thing I do want to do now is I want to uh, create some occlusion. So I am actually going to use the uh, labs occlusion node here. All right, so what that's going to do is just give us a little bit more occlusion information, uh, which is usually why I put the the point generator in there for the Z offset, it's just so I can pick up some occlusion. Now, um, might be a good idea at this time to add some more columns. So if we go up to the sweep node here, add some more columns, we'll get a better occlusion bake there. Yeah, it looks much better. All right, so um, let's put that into the vertex colors there. So let's do attribute wrangle like so. All right, we'll call this uh, OCC color. 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to add it on to what we currently have here. Um, I also want to get rid of this specularity in here. I don't need that. So if we hit D on the keyboard, go to the material tab here, do our specular rough. Uh, now we won't have any of that stuff. It's just so I can see things better. All right, so again, we're going to do our vector uh, other color. And this one is going to be point. We're going to get it from that first input, or in this case, the second input, which is index 1. Uh, I'll do a CD because that's the attribute we want. And at PT num because we want to get it from that same point. All right. Now, uh, for this one, I want to say that at CD dot... Uh, G is equal to other color. There we go. Yeah, and I might actually invert it. Let's do one minus. Yeah, there we go. Um, and now, I actually, I'm going to switch that up a bit. Hold on one second here. So let's go to our tip color. Let's put this one on the green channel. And let's put the other color here into the blue channel like so and the reason why we're getting this little squiggly line here is because currently other color is a vector and we're trying to shove it into a float value right here so let's just do uh, dot r there we go yeah much better so now we got all of the uh, information inside of our vertex colors here all right so let's um add a normal here and add a normal. The other thing we also need to do to prep this guy is to give this more of a spherical normals. Currently, if we we're to uh, put this into um, any game engine, Unity or Unreal, uh, it wouldn't light very well because all the normals are pointing in this direction. Uh, and so uh, what we need to do is we need to um, basically do an attribute transfer and create some spherical normals. So in order to do that, we need a sphere that has normals on it. All right, so let's do that. Let's take a look at this guy here. And I'm going to set this to polygon. I'm just going to up the resolution there. Hit Shift W on the keyboard to show my wireframe on shaded. And now we also need point normals as well for this to work. There we go. All right. And then I'm just going to do an attribute transfer. So let's do a transfer. There you are. So I'm just going to select both these guys and hook those guys up like so. Now you can see we're getting spherical normals. Pretty cool. Now I actually do want these guys pointing up mostly. And so um, if we are actually change the scale on our sphere here, I want something more like that. Yeah, that'll work. And uh, we need to clip this guy so we don't get any of these bottom normals here. So the only sample stuff we want. There we go. So what we did there is we clipped off the bottom. So these are the normals that we're sampling. These are the, the normals right here. That we're sam sampling onto here. So that will render much better inside of Unreal and inside of uh, Unity. All right, so uh, in order for this to show up at the correct scale for Unreal, we just need to multiply this by 100. There we go. And you get an F on the keyboard to zoom out or to frame your selection. All right, so I am going to put down a null node here and I'm going to call this high res for game. All right, so with that, we are now pretty much set up for everything. The uh, last thing we really need to do is uh, plop down a ROP FBX node. Now I might, I need to note that if you are using Apprentice, um, you have to use a ROP geometry output. All right. That'll export it to OBJ and you'll lose all your vertex colors for these next few steps. But uh, I'm actually going to be baking all this stuff down to a texture anyway. So uh, it'll still work. You can still export it out if you are using uh, Apprentice. All right, so I'm going to save this out now to the location of my hip file. So if I just select hip here, and um, I'm going to create a new folder called grasses. I might make a few here. And I'm going to call this uh, grass uh, card 001.fbx. There we go. And let's hit save to disk. Cool. All right, so with that, uh, let's jump over into Unreal and start getting things set up. And actually, before we do that, we need a terrain uh, that we can use. All right, so we'll do that in the next step, and then we'll go over into Unreal. All right, so let's focus on creating the terrain here. So I'm actually going to create a new geometry node, and I'm going to call this terrain. Uh, I did go ahead and um, call that grass card. Uh, this one is actually going to become a 
uh, HDA. I'm going to be using the Houdini Engine version 2 for this particular demonstration. So I'm going to call this um, IP uh, Grass uh, Terrain. There we go. All right, let's just drop down a height field here. And if you ever wanted to know uh, the the sizes that are valid for you know, Unreal and the Houdini Engine, you can always go to the documentation. Um, for this particular demonstration, I'm going to be using something really small. I don't need to go crazy with it. It's just really a test for grass and stuff like that. But just to show you guys, uh, let's go over here to the Houdini Engine for Unreal documentation. Uh, if you go to Landscapes, uh, you'll find all the uh, valid sizes. So I'm going to use just a 253 by 253 here. So we'll just set that in here. So 253 and 253. I'll leave it at a grid spacing of two for now. Um, also, it's recommended that you leave it at two when you're using the Houdini Engine. Uh, if you are baking these out to height fields, you can put it to one or like 0.5. Or not height fields, I'm sorry, height maps. All right, so let's add a little bit of noise. I really don't need a ton of noise here. Um, and I'm going to expose this anyway. So, But I want the default to be something like, I don't know, one. And the element size to be something like 10. I'm just making, you know, kind of like a really rough. Maybe we'll do like two. Go a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I just want kind of really basic noise there. Nothing crazy. All right. So with that done, uh, let's go now and create our um, layers. So I'm just going to do two layers for this one. I don't need to go crazy for this particular deal. So um, I'm going to do a mass clear. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways. So if you use a mask clear and then set it to a value of one, uh, it'll actually add a mask. You can also drop down a uh, volume wrangle node in here. So if you go like this, you can say um, at mask is equal to one. Same deal, right? So whichever one you want to do, same deal. All right, so with that, uh, now we have a mask. Um, I'm going to do some noise. Let's just do a mask noise here like so, and we'll do a subtract. And we just need to take down the element size. I just want to kind of create a really splotchy type of grass layer here. And uh, let's go and blur that. So I'm going to do a mass blur. All right, and we'll do a remap. So height field remap. And inside this remap node, all we need to do is just change this to mask rather than height, and then we can uh, remap this guy, so I just want to bring that in a little bit more, like so. Something like that. Yeah. Cool. So now we need to get these into layers that uh, Houdini Engine can read. So let's first um, take this guy here. Well, actually, let's just, um, since we only have two layers, this will actually be way easier. So I'm just going to do a copy layer here. And this one's going to be uh, grass, so we'll say mask goes to grass, like so. And uh, I really just need the opposite of this, so I can do a volume wrangle node here, like so. I can say um, at mask is equal to 1 mi minus mask. There we go. So now we get the opposite, right, because we need to make sure that all of our layers inside of our Unreal landscapes add up to a value of 1 there. So we'll just call this... Um, Dirt mask, and we'll do. I'm just going to copy this, copy to layer node, and we'll say mask goes to dirt, like so. So now, if you were to check out your primitives here, uh, we have height, mass, grass, and dirt. Perfect. And that pretty much is all we need to do here for this test terrain. Uh, we will have to add a material here, but we haven't made it yet. So I'm going to do Unreal Material. There we go. And there's nothing in there yet. I'm going to get it just prepped. So we put it on primitives and on the height layer. Cool. So let's get this now made into a digital asset. So I'm going to just right click on, say, create digital asset. And we're going to name this with a namespace and a version number. There we go. And I'm just going to save it into wherever I have all this stuff that I'm working on. Very nice. All these files will be available to all the patrons. All right, so let's go and get rid of these default parameters. We don't need these guys here anymore. 
Now, um, I'm probably going to want to have control over the noise, so let's just promote these two guys and call it a day there for this particular HDN. I'm not going to get into, you know, exposing too much of the stuff. I really just want to concentrate on the, the grass, and for that, I need a terrain. So, um, yeah, with that all set up, let's go and uh, get it all set up inside of Unreal. All right, so let's get things set up here inside of Unreal. So I just wanted to show that I am using the new uh, Houdini Engine V2. Now, I need to note, um, there are still things that are broken in this, so um, I would not recommend using this in any sort of production uh, just yet. And that's really just my two cents. Um, there's a few bugs that are just kind of showstoppers for me. Um, there, are, Most of it does work. It's just you're going to run into some you know areas where, um, like, for instance, closed curves basically shuts down and crashes the Houdini Engine. So you can't have any tool that has a closed curve in it, which is comes up so often. So um, that, and uh, there are still some issues with the PDG. So anyways, um, let's get our terrain set up. So I'm just going to close this guy down and um, I've gone ahead. Let's go and create a new folder called this levels. And we're also going to have um, objects. We're going to have uh, materials like so. And we're also going to have HDAs. At least I think just one for now. All right, so let's save this. I'm going to call this my um, grass map. And inside of our HDAs, let's go find our HDA here. Uh, so let's open up the folder. And let's go to where I am saving all that stuff. And that is going to be in here. All right. So let's go and uh, just drag and drop this guy into here. All right. And then we just need to make sure that the Houdini engine is running. So currently we are not running. So I'm just going to create a session. There you go. So you'll see this Houdini engine session connected. So with that done, we can just drag and drop our terrain into the level. And because it's a super tiny terrain, it doesn't take very long to show up at all. All right, so very cool. Well, now we have our terrain all set up, and we have procedural control over it. Um, I always like to center these guys up. Um, I really don't like having those things offset when it comes to terrains. Beautiful. So now we need to go and create the material for this. So let's just make a really basic material. I'm not going to get into creating any sort of crazy auto landscape thing. I'm just trying to focus on grass here. So I'm just going to call this terrain mat, or um, MM, sorry. thought I was in Unity there for a second. All right, so let's open this guy up. Cool. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is just get my landscape layer blend, and we're going to set up our two layers. So I have two layers here, and we're going to do uh, dirt, uh, because these are what I named them inside of Houdini, and grass, and then I need two colors, like so. And so for dirt, I'm going to use kind of an earthy dirt color. Desaturate it a little bit more red there. Yeah, there you go. And then I want a grass color. Yeah, a little more saturation. Uh, let's expose these. So let's convert it to a parameter. We'll call it dirt color. And we will call this uh, grass color. There we go. And we just need to hook these guys up like so. And then we put that into our base color there. Uh, well, let's get all of our specular stuff set up. So I just need three parameters here. This is not metallic. Um, I'm going to put the specular at 0 0.5. And I'll actually put that there. There we go. And then our roughness will be one. There you go. Beautiful. Now, in order for uh, our grass to show up, we need to utilize the grass, let's see, grass output node here, and then pick a um, landscape sample, so a layer sample. So we want to sample the grass layer. There we go. And that's all you need to do. Beautiful. So hit apply and save. And I'm going to shut this guy down here. And uh, let's make a uh, material instance for this. Awesome. 
All right, and so uh, if we select the landscape itself, you can do this right off the bat, but I, I do want this to um, actually uh, show up when I just create the HDA itself, all right? So all we really need to do for that is go and copy the reference here um, and then go back into Houdini right here. And that's what this little guy here is for. So all we need to do is say S at Unreal Material. Now, if you're using Unity, it would be uh, Unity Material. And then paste in that path. Basically, the same process. It's just that um, you would put Unity in here rather than Unreal. Uh, and the pathing stuff is uh, basically the same. Uh, you just have to get the path from Unity. All right, it'll just look different. All right, so with that, I'm just going to save my HDA. So you can do that up here in the breadcrumbs. So save that. And then we can come into our... Well, actually, we could do it up here. Let's just uh, right-click on this and say Rebuild Selected. And now, automatically, the uh, material gets assigned for us. Beautiful. All right, so now we need to bring in our uh, grass card uh, that we exported out. All right, so let's do that. Let's uh, open up our folder here. And I'm going to go to my objects. I'm just going to drag and drop this guy in here. And for the um, information here, I actually want to go to the mesh settings and we want to replace because we have vertex colors in here. So I'm just going to import all that stuff. Beautiful. And now let's go and let's actually just do this. I'm actually going to go and right click and create a new uh, grass type. And we'll call this uh, grass 001. Now for now, I'm just going to be using the high res mesh. I know this isn't what you actually do. Um, and so let's make this a little bit smaller here. We're going to turn this into a card here in just a little bit. I just want to make sure that this is all looking good. Yeah, we'll leave all that stuff at that setting there. And let's go now into our materials. So we need to get that uh, master material for the terrain here all set up. So inside of our uh, grass, uh, we need to go and assign our grass type to this guy. All right, let's go back to here. And just drag and drop this landscape and hit apply or save, whichever one you want to do. And there we go. So now we've got grass. Yeah. All right, so with that all set up, um, I'm going to stop it there and we're going to move on to setting up the material for the grass itself. All right, let's uh, go and create the uh, grass material here now. And uh, for that, I'm just going to create a new material. I'll call this the grass mass material. I'm going to open this guy up here. Let's make it full screen. All right, so for this guy, I'm actually going to set it to um, double-sided foliage. And we're going to, going to make it two-sided. And I am going to bring in that vertex color that we set up inside of Houdini. And I'm going to set up a lerp here, and we're going to basically lerp between two colors. So let's do that. Let's create two colors here. And this first one is going to be like a green. I'm just going to kind of stub these guys in here. And this other one's going to be another like dirt color. And with darker dirt. Yeah, something like that. All right, so let's hook these up into the A and B inputs there. And if you remember, our red is our main gradient. So let's um, hook that up there. There we go. Very cool. Uh, I'm also going to hook this up into my emissive color. And then I also want to uh, fix my normals a little bit. So let's actually, before we do that, let's uh, assign this to the model here. Just so we can see it all in action while we're building this here. So we're going to go back to our objects, uh, open up that grass card editor here, and um, let's assign the material to it. So I'm just going to drag and drop this guy into there. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Cool. So now we have the ability to, you know, color it uh, using that uh, ramp that we created. But you notice that you're going to get this weird uh, lighting issue uh, for all these guys. Uh, we also need to plug in the subsurface. Let's do that as well. All right. Let's hit apply. Yeah. 
you're all, we're going to get this weird lighting issue, basically. Um, I mean, they're, they are looking cool so far, uh, but uh, we need to fix that. So uh, I'm going to create a new um, up vector. So if we just come into our a constant here, create an up vector, and we're going to use that two-sided sign node. There you go. Uh, I'm just going to multiply these guys together. And put that in for the normal. <clears throat> Hit apply. There we go. Yeah. Much better. Cool. So now we're starting to get some pretty cool uh, grasses. Um, so at this point, you know, what I usually end up doing is I'll go into my grass. Let's actually come over here in our objects, open up the grass type and start playing around with uh, a lot of these values. Now, I'm not going to pump this up too crazy just yet to for the grass density. I'm really just going to play around with some of these values here uh, to get a better idea of you know what I need to do before we actually render this out to a card. So a couple of things I want to do is you know rotate them. Uh, we also need to fix the specularity. I don't want any of that stuff. Let's go back into the material here. Now you might want specularity for this, but I'm going to actually turn it off for this demonstration here. All right, so not metallic. Specular can be 0 0.5. And our roughness, I did, that, did it again. Put it in the wrong one. Uh, our roughness can be 1. There you go. Let's uh, hit save. Yeah, much better. Cool. All right, so yeah, like I was saying, I, I will go in here uh, at this point, because currently, remember, I'm using the high-res mesh, and that's not going to work for the final result. Uh, I really want to get an idea before I start rendering all this stuff out, the textures, um, if this is going to work really well or not, these particular shapes. Uh, so what I can do now is I can go back to Houdini. Let's say I wanted a little bit wider, because I feel like it's just not wide enough, right? So if I go back to Houdini over here, uh, we'll go back into our grass card over here. Let's go back to our line and make it a little bit longer, like so. Yeah, and let's play around with our size, too. So um, let's go to our length ramp. Maybe the max length should be something like that. And maybe we add a couple more. And here, that's a little too much. And really, I just don't like how kind of uniform it is. We should also come in here and uh, right click, set this to be spline, and then maybe um, add some more variation in here, like so. Uh, let's try that out real quick. So I just hit or select the FBX node, hit save the disk, uh, go back to Unreal, and go back to my objects and just re-import this guy. Yeah, so now we're starting to get something cool. Let's close out this window. Much better. Uh, we're also going to need a few more of these guys. But that is looking pretty nice so far. All right, so I'll let you guys mess around with it. I'm going to mess around with it a little bit more too, but uh, let's move on to the next step. All right, so uh, after playing around with it, you know, I got it into a spot where I, I kind of liked it. Um, I didn't spend too much more time, but um, I did... Uh, basically add more uh, clumps and stuff like that to it and um, I added in the the simple wind inside of the, the uh, material. Let me show you guys really quick what I did. Uh, so yeah, I just added the simple grass wind there. I just kind of messed around with the colors a little bit more too, so nothing super crazy. Um, again, uh, patrons will have access to all these files um, and if you don't feel like uh, signing up the Patreon, which is totally fine. Um, I'll put this up on Gumroad as well. So let's take a look um, inside of Houdini now and see what I did. So um, basically, yeah, after I transformed it, I just used a uh, copy and transform node and I played around with the translate in X and um, the rotation in Y. Kind of got this uh, shape here and then I basically just recentered it up on the, uh, the grid like so. And that seemed to work pretty well. So now that I have a, a good idea of what I want to do, um, I need to make sure that I'm not utilizing the, 
the super high res uh, mesh here. So um, what we're going to do now is walk through the process of making the texture sheet and uh, the actual grass cards that are a lot less low poly, but also um, they keep the overdraw in mind as well. And we're going to make it all procedural so it's easy to change and stuff like that. All right, so um, our goal is to get something um, like this that we render out. And then basically um, we have a, a texture that we're going to render out from this particular uh, data here. So let me show you guys how I set all this up. So uh, before I get started, I, I did create a, a duplicate grass card here. And um, the reason why I did that is because I want to have this texture sheet. And all I did was I went up into the scatter and I changed the, the uh, global seed to something that was just different than the other one. So now I have two versions of that same grass card. All right, so if I were to actually just show this right here. So I just have two versions of the same grass card, but with a different seed value. So they're, you know, different. All right, so um, what we need to do is we need to get this into um, a format like this, right? So let's uh, take a look at, at this guy right here. Um, basically, I got it down to uh, about 183 polygons here. And so I'm going to walk through the process of how I uh, did all this here. So let's uh, let's get it done. It's not that hard, actually. So let's drop down a GeoNode. I'm going to turn this one off, and we'll call this uh, Cards 2. All right. And I'm going to go and get an Object Merge node, and I'm going to set this Transform to None, and we're going to go and get our first Grass Clump. So Grass Card. Very cool. And... Um, I did put in those grass card nodes here. I did put in this out option here. And I think I'm actually going to do it before the transform because we're going to do that anyways um, here in just a sec for our actual cards that we're using. So I want to get this guy right here. And so in my object merge node, let's just do the out. Yeah. Like so. That way we're all normalized between in the unit grid here. Uh, and let's make sure we do that for grass card one. This is why we make HDAs, so we don't have to update multiple nodes. But um, I'm not going to make an HDA in this particular um, video. Just know that you know it's probably a good idea to now that we have this grass card maker or grass clump maker, I should say. You can make it into an HDA and just pump out tons of different types of things that you want. All right, so uh, I'm going to call this uh, clump A, and this one's going to be clump B like so. And then I want to transform one of them right up above it. And you can put it anywhere you want. I just want to make sure that I transform it. So let's put that on the template there and give it enough space so we don't get any bleeding in the uh, mitmaps. All right, so let's uh, merge these two guys together. I'm going to hold down Alt on the keyboard just so I can drag off that there. Hit Shift S on the keyboard to get these more curly lines there. All right, so now we have our texture sheet that we want to render out and I need to actually change this to the other one. So in this object merge node for B grass clump, there we go. So now we have two different ones. All right. So let's throw down a, a match size uh, node here and put it back into the normalized space. So I'm just going to hit scale to fit and we're going to do a uniform scale. All right, cool. So if I do spacebar three on the keyboard, uh, to go into my front viewport, you can see now it's all normalized. So this basically is our texture space at this point, right? Like basically at this point, you can make it any size you want because we're normalized between zero and one, right? So this box here represents a size of one in all axes. Very handy node. All right. So uh, with that uh, completed, let's um, go and turn this into a real grass card. Uh, at this point, uh, this is going to be the geometry that we render out. So I'm going to say out uh, for render, like so. Okay, so um, the trick to this is to turn all of this geometry into just a single card and get rid of all this um, excess geometry or polygon counts. Now, the, the node that I'm going to be using is the Triangulate 2D node. Uh, if I were to actually plop this in there right now, you'll see that it's, it's working, but it's um, getting both these guys. And it... That's just because we need to separate these out into groups, right? To get the two cards. And so to do that, I'm going to create some groups up here. So I'm going to drop down a group node. Uh, we're going to call this A, like so. And then I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to call this one B. And all I need to do uh, for these guys is to set this to uh, 
Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. Group name is A, and this is B. Let's remove that so it selects everything. And switch these guys over to point groups, because you'll notice in the Triangulate 2D node, it's taking in a point group. All right, cool. So now if I were just to do group A, it'll do just that one, right? Perfect. So let's uh, do number, or do group B, so we get that guy. Beautiful. So now we got some cool geometry to work with. Um, let's go now and um, merge these guys back together. All right, so now I have these two pieces. But what I need to do is I need to be able to procedurally um, scatter these in some sort of circle fashion, right? And so I need to get these guys uh, centered on the grid again. And to do that, I'm going to use an assemble mode here. And that basically then provides, let me open up my geometry spreadsheet here. So this will actually put out a specific attribute called name on the primitives. And um, we can then use a for each loop. So for each named primitive here. And we can use that name attribute to loop over each one of those particular pieces of geometry, each one of those cards there. All right, so our goal now is to get these guys basically sitting at the center of the world. So to do that, it's really just use that match size node again, like so, and set that guy to minimum. So now at the end of this loop here, if I turn off single pass, I have them both back at the center of the grid there, which is great. Okay, so while we're at it, we might as well also pro provide an ID for these. So I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle. And this ID is going to be useful when we uh, use the variant attribute on the copy to points node. So I'm going to say I at um, ID is equal to some sort of number. And that number we can actually get from this meta import node here. So I'm going to ca call this loop data, like so. And then I'm just going to plug this guy into the second out or input here, or input one. And I'm going to get uh, the iteration number, right? Because that moves. So I'm going to actually get it from geometry one. And I want the iteration attribute and zero for the first index. There we go. Very cool. Awesome. So now if I look at my uh, point attributes here, excuse me, um, I have an ID value now for zero and one. Awesome. And that is working out perfectly for me. So now um, all I need to do is scatter this stuff around. I also need to get rid of all this internal geometry here. Uh, so let's do that. Let's uh, do a group here. And um, we can actually, let's actually do it up here before our loop. And be, actually before this assemble node here. So to move all those guys together, I just held down the control key on the keyboard and picked this one. It moves everything below it. All right, so let's call this uh, group node or the group name here border. And I just want to select the border of this. So I'm just going to go to edges, enable, include by edges, and do, and do the unshared edges. And that gets me the border selection there. And then what I can do is use a dissolve node and um, get rid of everything that is not a border. So I say not or exclamation mark border. And we need to turn off or move inline points on that dissolve node. And like that, we got rid of everything in the middle, but we kept our border. Um, one thing to note though, is you're gonna have leftover points. So um, good way to get rid of those guys here is just to drop down a facet node and just say remove inline points. And that gets rid of anything that's within this uh, tolerance distance. And so 0 0.001, basically it's negligible if it's there or not. Beautiful. All right, so now we have both these guys. Perfect. Um, the other thing we're also gonna need to do is uh, create the proper UVs for these guys um, before we actually move them back to the center of the world. All right, so after we do this right here, all we need to do, because we normalized it with that match size node, is just drop down a uh, UV project node, like so. And by default, it's going to be set up to that uh, normalized box, basically. And so now I've got these guys in the perfect uh, space for, you know, when we render this texture out, it'll actually match up perfectly. Um, so you don't have to worry about moving it um, or adjusting UVs or anything like that. All right, so let's keep going here. We're almost there. Uh, let's now drop down a null node. Um, these are going to be my cards, like so. Very nice. Now I need a circle, so let's drop down a circle. And I'm going to put this on the ZX plane, so let's go over here. All right, and you can leave it as a primitive. I really just want to use 
this circle as a means to scatter points on. So I'm just going to scatter some points on there like that and put this up to something like maybe six points. Now with this um, done, now that I have these points, I need normals on it. All right, so I'm going to actually utilize a preset that comes with this point expression node. I'm going to switch it over to normal and um, use one of the presets, and that's this spheres by n right there. So now if I were to turn on my normals, you can see I have it facing outwards from the circle perfectly. Now I want that normalized as well, so I'm just going to use the normalize uh, method here. All right, and with that, now we need um, a random ID set to these, because we have IDs now set on these guys. So let's do an attribute randomize over here and uh, set the ID. And so I'm going to set this to a name of ID. We're going to put it on the points. Uh, I'm going to use a custom uh, discrete here. And um, I only need two because I only have two cards. So I'm going to set zero to one here and start playing around with these um, weight values. So you can see it moving over here when I move the slider. So I want a nice spread and even distribution. Now, uh, you can see that it's a float value because it has a decimal place there. So if I do an attribute cast, um, I can cast this to an integer, and that is required for the variant um, to work. So I need to convert it from a float to an uh, integer. So now we can actually go and copy this to um, our points here. So if I just take my cards, put it into the copy of the points here, you can see it's starting to work. All right. Um, we just need to turn on this piece attribute and um, set the piece um, ID attribute to ID, like so. And now um, you'll notice that this obviously isn't going to work. Um, our circle is just way too big. So let's just move this inwards like so, which is great. That looks looking perfect. It's kind of giving me a better uh, distribution as well. Um, we Let's also go and uh, rotate these guys. So they're kind of rotated a little bit like that. Yeah. And you can even tighten this up a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. So uh, we should also redo our normals as well at this point because we have new geometry. Um, these normals actually look like they might work, but um, let's just be sure. So I'm going to actually save my scene really quick here so I don't lose any of this stuff for you guys. Uh, let's go back to our grass card, our original one there, and uh, let's just copy all this right here. And then let's go back to our cards too. And we will just paste this down here and we'll just reset our normals. Yeah, there we go. So that's the power of using all these nodes. Uh, you don't have to reset it up. And also the power of making uh, HDAs. So you don't have to just constantly do that over and over again. Uh, like, you know, honestly, it would be a good idea just to make this into an HDA. So you could just select all these guys and do a Shift C. And uh, this is, you can call this spherical, move my cursor there, spherical normals. There you go, right? Now you can just copy that around, or you know, if it's an HDA, just use it over and over again. Beautiful. All right, so that actually becomes our geometry, and you, and you can see our UVs are laid out perfectly. Um, so at this point, we just need to do a transform, and um, this will be our Unreal scale. And scale it up to 100. Awesome. And then we just need our um, FBX node again and again if you're using apprentice you'll need to be using the uh, rop geometry output node that guy okay cool so for the fbx we got to get rid of that guy and then just plug this in and then um, i'm going to save this in the grasses we'll call this grass card two all right there we go so now we're all set up with that let's just hit uh, save to disk the same I seen once again. Now we need to get set up for rendering. So we have this guy already set up uh, for rendering. So um, let's close that out there. And in the next step, um, I'm going to show you guys how to get the uh, the texture out. All right. So now we need to um, get our texture out for this guy. So we already set up this node here. This is going to be UV out for uh, render um, like like so. So that's what we're going to actually be uh, rendering here. So first things first, we need a, a constant material. So uh, if you just go to the material palette and drag out one of these constants, right, into the palette, then you have this material. Um, I'm going to set that to that guy. And that basically makes it so it doesn't pick up any sort of lighting or anything. I just want the actual full texture there. All right. And so uh, let's go back to OBJ context here. So I did set up a camera. Let me turn it off and show you guys how I did that. So let's do a camera here and we'll call this render cam. 
All right, there we go. Now, um, inside of this guy, I want to move this back in Z1, like so. And then I want to go to my view, set this to orthographic, and set the ortho width to 1. And then I want to set the resolution to something like um, 1K. So now if I go to my camera, using this little guy right here, so I go to render cam, you can see I have it uh, fitting perfectly inside of our 1K texture. It also matches up to the geometry that we just created as well. All right, so um, let me close my previous render view there. So now we're ready to render. At this point, that's when you want to go to the out context. So currently we're in OBJ, which is where you do all your geometry stuff. So now I'm going to go to my out, and I actually created a mantra node. Um, let me delete that, and let's go and create a, a new one here. All right, so this is going to be our mantra node, and I actually want to utilize my render cam that I created. So let's go and get the render cam. Beautiful. And let's uh, do a render. So let's um, open up the render view for mantra rendering. And let's just hit render. It doesn't take very long at all. There's not a lot to render. There we go. So now we've got our texture all set up. Uh, one thing you'll notice, um, if I go and turn on my uh, view bar, uh, we have no um, real alpha. You do have this op ID. Um, but I want the actual alpha. And so I'm going to do this um, extra image planes. I'm going to come all the way to the bottom here. And in extra image planes, I can hit that little guy like so and then get um, the alpha. So now if I were to look at my alpha, I have my alpha mask here as well. Um, cool. So let's just uh, save this out. Now you can go and just uh, render it using this guy right here and setting the output picture. Um, or you can always just right click on the, the view itself, the render view, and say save frame. And then go pick a location. So I'm just going to go into grasses and I'm going to put this guy here. I'm going to call this uh, grass uh, sheet uh, 002 just to make sure that it lines up with my other grass card. And I'll save it as a PNG. And then I just need to tell it to use that new alpha plane for the alpha and hit save. And there you go. Cool. So now um, we have the texture out. And uh, we are now ready to go back into Unreal and get it all set up using our lower poly mesh. All right, let's get all the uh, new assets imported here. So um, I'm going to go to my folder. Just make this a little easier. Let's just import these two guys. Uh, let's make sure that we uh, replace our vertex colors, which is good. Yep, and we've got our texture. Let's just make sure that we have, yep, we have the alpha in there. It's beautiful. All right, so we are set up. We have all of our vertex colors. Super awesome. So let's get our grass cards set up here uh, with all that stuff. So we do need the material. We're going to have to update the material to be using the texture now. Uh, we can still use some of the vertex color stuff. Um, let's put this guy into there. Awesome. All right, let's save this and just minimize it for now. And let's go and edit our master material. So now what I want to do is replace some of this stuff. Um, like I said, you know, we can't actually still utilize the vertex colors. You'll notice um, inside of uh, Houdini over here, if I were to go back to my out or my uh, OBJ context and take a look at my current uh, geometry. Let's take a look at our cards, our final cards down here. Uh, they still have the red at the bottom. All right, so the wind should still work, so we can still utilize the vertex colors for that. Uh, but now we need a texture, so um, I am going to just go and select my texture really quick. And then inside the material editor, hold down T and click, and that will get me that texture. So now um, I want to utilize the red for here and the green for the tips. Yep. I think I'm using the blue for occlusion. That's what it was. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I think that works now. Perfect. Awesome. So yeah, now we have the vertex colors driving the wind. And we're also need to replace this guy. So I need to actually copy this right here. Totally doing this on the fly here. So pardon my pauses while I think about stuff. All right, that should be working just fine now. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's uh, also, we need to go and change the type to masked. 
and uh, get our alpha put into our opacity mask. Yeah, there we go. Uh, hit save. Alrighty, and let's check our grass card now. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's see everything's working like it should still. So pretty easy uh, shift over. I know, you know, if you are new to Houdini, that was probably quite a bit to take in there, but um, I use this quite often uh, these days to generate new cards. You can also use it with the Mega Scan stuff. Maybe I'll do another video on that as well. Um, let's replace now inside of our uh, grass types here. Let's replace this guy. There we go. Cool. Yeah. You can see the performance is way better <laughs> now. And we get basically the same look, you know? So really cool. Um, I'm going to go and add, I want to make this a little bit thicker just because it's cool. Uh, let's add one more element here and we'll do just, I'm just going to use the same static mesh here. Yeah. Yeah. It looks pretty good from a top down view. I could probably still work on the, the placement. You know, when you're working on these grass cards, you go through lots of uh, just really subtle uh, changes to, you know, try to fit most use cases. This is actually working out pretty good so far. Yeah liking it so far let's put it up the density here now that we've got lower poly stuff let's hit save yeah and there we go so that's how we make uh, procedural grass cards pretty cool um, like i said i might um, do one where i i start from a mega scans texture or atlas texture because you, you can use the same process to do mega scan stuff as well um, all procedurally so you're not having a hand place or hand generate uh, the cards themselves so hopefully you guys like that let me know um, your thoughts in the comments and um, thanks so much